Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. It's Thursday. Today, we're going to start a new series. We're making a junk journal out of junk. So I hope you follow along and uh, did you get inspired by this new series? Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you, Miss Mimsy, for moderating. Oh, that takes a lot of stress off of me. That's for sure. So I appreciate you so much. Hello, Sally. Thank you for moderating. Hey, everybody. So today we are starting something totally new. Not new to my channel because I do make junk journals and all kinds of different journals here on my channel. But this is the first time we've done a live series for making a junk journal. But I have some news before we get started. It's so great to see y'all. So today we are live, but I realized I was looking at my planner that next Thursday is Christmas Eve. And because I know if you're anything like me, Christmas Eve, you are trying to get so much done, right? Christmas Eve is a busy day. So I'm going to pre-record next week's video, okay? And at the end of today's video, I'll tell you what next week is going to be about. But I'm going to pre-record that. And... The following Thursday is New Year's Eve. I'm going to pre-record the journal video for New Year's Eve, but we're going to be in South Carolina, camping in South Carolina. So I think I'm going to also not only release the journal video that I'm going to pre-record, but I think I'm going to try to go live from the camper in South Carolina and uh, maybe do a demonstration on... English paper piecing hexes. So a lot's going to depend on our internet signal <laughs> and streaming capabilities from South Carolina, but that's my plan. Okay, so no live the next two Thursdays. There'll be pre-recorded art journaling videos. I'll be working in the journal cover that we're making today, but keep an eye out for me on New Year's Eve because I might be going live from South Carolina. How is everybody doing? <clears throat> this is the most I've talked all morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So great to see you. I don't know if you got notified of the video I put out last night. Let me show you something. Last night, I put out a video, kind of like a Christmas present. A free pattern that if you have not gotten this yet, I want you to check out that video. It should be pretty close to the top. It was just put out last night here on my channel. But uh, yeah, in that video description box, I give out this two-page pattern. But in the video, I'll walk you through how to make it. And we made this cute little tea caddy. And this project was inspired by a gift that Jeannie sent to me. She sent me the purple one, and I fell in love with it, and I was like, yes, okay, this is what we're going to do for Christmas this year. And uh, so mine's made a little bit different than Jeannie's, but still about the same size. Mine might be a little bit taller. But yeah, if you haven't seen this video, make sure to check it out so you can make some of these for yourself, okay? I wanted to start with that. so great to see y'all so y'all this video today's video is going to be a lot different it's a lot unstructured it's a lot less structured how do i say that <laughs> but uh yeah we're just going to be having some fun i want you if you have been saving your boxes food boxes junk mail go ahead and grab that stuff go ahead and grab it uh, I'll give you the measurements of what I'm doing, but like I just said, this is totally unstructured. So feel free to have fun creating and do sizes that you want that's good for you. And yeah, let me show you what we're going to make. An accordion hinge journal. Now, this journal, I had never made one like this before. So, uh... I was on the hunt because I want to make my journal that we're doing in this series an art journal, a place to create little pieces of art and keep them all in one place. Um, 
but I like to be able to take my pages out of the book while I'm working on them. So we're not going to be hand sewing the pages into our journal. And so in my search for a journal that I could do that, kind of like my happy planner, right? I really love the disc on my happy planner, but I wanted to do something even more different. I found Club Scrap. It is a channel here on YouTube. Her name is Trisha Morris, and I have linked her video in the description box below. So if you want to kind of see an idea of what this journal is going to be about, then check out the link in the description box. Trisha Morris at Club Scrap. She made an accordion hinge journal. See this little section right here is a different color. That is the accordion hinge. So that's how we're going to be putting together this junk journal. Isn't this pretty though? This ribbon was from my friend Linda. She sent that to me here recently. But let me show you how this journal goes together, right? See this little hinge? This piece, this white piece, is the hinge that you see on the outside. And then we're going to cut little pieces that fit right inside that hinge. And they slide out like this. And you can take this page out. Isn't that genius? You can work on your page. And then when you're done with it, you can put it back. And if you're completely done with it, you can glue this piece in so that it doesn't come out and then it's permanently bound into your book. I fell in love instantly watching that video. <laughs> Let me see if I can get that back in there. I cut this one really snug. See, it just snugly fits right inside that little fold. And now it is holding this page into the book. Isn't that awesome? So that's how the pages will be held into our book. And of course, for this journal, I just used some uh, patterned paper, a paper pad that I had gotten from Tuesday mornings. And so, of course, all the pages are sort of color coordinated together. But yes, it is awesome. So that is the style of journal that we're going to be making. Again, I've linked Trisha's video in the description box. So when you're done watching today, if you want to check it out, show Miss Trisha some love, that would be awesome. Linda said, what kind of paper? Well, this one was a paper pad. It's uh, it's not even cardstock. It's just patterned paper. It was a 12 by 12 paper pad from Tuesday mornings. Uh, so that's what this one is made of. But the one we're making in this series is from junk. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Uh, so it's not going to look, you know, as well put together as this one. But it will when we're done with the series. Sandy said, I've made her into a junk journal monster. <laughs> Barbara, I know, I love the Tuesday mornings. I love them. So, yes, this is what we're going to be making. You know what? We can go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to put that off to the side. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Uh, one of my friends, we were Zooming the other night, and I think it was Linda. I was showing that journal because I just finished it. And she's like, that's pretty, but what do you do with it? <laughs> what do you do with it? I guess Miss Linda, she doesn't use journals to journal in, and I totally get it. So this series might be something totally new for you. You might not even be into journaling your thoughts or journaling you know, memories and stuff like that. Have you ever been in a creative slump? Maybe. I think we all have, right? Where you're just in between projects or you're working on a large quilt and you just need to get away from it, but you feel like doing something creative. <laughs> but you don't really want to cut up fabric or sit at the sewing machine. This would be a perfect craft because it gets those creative juices going. But, uh, yeah, you're doing something totally different. 
And if you don't use journals, if you can't find a reason to use a journal, like I, I told Linda, maybe it's a, it's a fancy little grocery list keeper. <laughs> maybe you can keep telephone numbers, addresses in it. But maybe you know someone who would love it and you can give it as a gift, right? Maybe you want to make journals, but you're not going to keep them. You can just give them to your friends. People love them. People love them. Yes, I can go back uh, several, several years, about 10 years in my journals. It's kind of fun to see where I was then and to see where I am now. It's also a reminder of all the things to be grateful for, right? <laughs> you know, when you're going through stuff, it kind of feels like you're never going to get out of it, right? Sometimes we have those seasons where they just feel like it's, this is going to last forever. And uh, you can't see a way out of it. And so, of course, we do come out of it, right? The journals are really great for me to go back and see where I was and to be grateful for <laughs> not being there anymore, right? So for this journal, we're going to get started with the hinge because I think that the hinge is going to determine a lot of different things as we move forward. So for my hinge, y'all, I just have this great big paper envelope. <laughs> it's junk mail. It's junk. Uh, but it is an envelope. See, there was all this junk mail inside. The paper is a little bit on the thicker side than a normal sheet of paper, but it's not like cardstock, right? It's just paper. And then for the little pieces that I slide out of the hinge that I showed you, I'm going to cut pieces of cardboard for that from this box of popsicles. So that's what we're going to do first, okay? We're going to make the hinge. I'm going to show you how. Let me grab a pair of scissors. I'm just going to cut the sides of this envelope right off. It doesn't have to be nice and pretty. <laughs> we don't have to measure anything right this minute. I can take this off. I was trying to get myself organized. Let's see. We're just cutting. For your hinge, I would find a larger piece of paper. Yep, it's glued at the bottom, so let me cut that piece off. Or if you don't have a larger piece of paper, you're just going to repeat this process a couple of times, okay? There we go. Let's see, the back is actually all white with no writing on it, so let's use that piece. Let's see, I'm going to bring in my scoreboard because that helps me fold nice and straight with my shaky little hands. <laughs> it's got a little, a little edge, a little lip there. That's going to help me fold. We're going to be folding this piece of paper several times to create the hinge. Okay, so um, let's see. Do I want to fold it this way? That's going to give me a smaller hinge, or do I want to fold it this way? Let me think for a second, because there are no rules. You could do it either way. Let's go ahead and fold it this way. So I'm just going to start folding my paper to create the hinge. I'm going to be folding and matching up this raw edge just like that. Just like that. I was going to score that just like that. And of course, I didn't do it straight. <laughs> This was supposed to help with that. My hands have been so super shaky. I've even switched to decaf tea for this afternoon. So we have it folded in half one time. Just like that. I'm going to turn this folded edge up against this edge. I'm going to actually turn it like that because that's slanted. There we go. That helps. We're going to fold just like this. 
We're going to flip it over. We're going to fold this longer side in half. And we're just going to keep on folding, creating a little hinge. Hazel wants to know, what is the board you're using? So um, I've linked a couple things in case you want to check them out. This is actually a scoreboard from EK Tools, okay? Uh, you can make envelopes with it. You can score paper nice and straight. Um, it comes with a little tool right there to make envelopes. So it's really super duper handy. Uh, but I like using the straight edge, not this curved edge, to do folds that are nice and perfect and lined up just like that. All right, so now we're going to go back this way. And we're going to fold this paper again. Just like that. Let's flip it over and we'll fold it again like this. Like that. And now we have this great big piece. Let's open this up like that. We'll fold it towards that middle crease, just like that. And then we're gonna flip it over and fold again towards that middle crease. Just like that. So when we fold it together, it looks just like this and of course, it looks like a little accordion, right? Bunch of little W's in there. So once you have your paper all folded, I'm just gonna give this a really good score, nice, just like that. You don't have to use a paper cutter, but it helps me. <laughs> We're gonna cut this into three sections. Okay, we're gonna cut it into three equal sections. So let's measure how wide this is because I want them to be equal sections. Nine inches, we could make two, four, six, two and a half inch sections. Valeria, thank you so much, Valeria. Uh, I got your box yesterday. I was so excited. I posted a picture on Facebook my mind was blown. <laughs> oh my gosh. That quilt kit is gorgeous. I'm going to open up my paper just so it's nice and easy to cut through. So I'm not cutting through all of those layers, right? I'm going to trim away this raw edge and just clean that edge right up. And let's see. I said two and a half inch sections. So now we can measure over. We're going to cut three pieces of this hinge that are two and a half inches. So there's one. Two. And uh, let's see, this is the last one, two and a half inches. So we have a little tiny scraps left over. And now we have three hinges we're going to glue together. Thank you, Miss Hazel. I'm sorry, I just hit the camera. I'm sorry. It'll stop shaking here in a second. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel. Valeria, that quilt kit is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Remind me to share it with everybody. It's right behind me. Now that we have cut our paper into three strips, we now have three accordion pieces. So that's a lot faster than pre-cutting them and then folding each one separately, right? This is so much faster. I thought that was genius. <laughs> At this point, we're going to glue these pieces together. Thank you. You like my little ant antlers? They're from the Dollar Tree. I'm trying on purpose to get into the Christmas spirit. Sometimes we have to do things on purpose, right? 
With our first piece, I want you to notice when it's just sitting here that it has two little pieces that flip up. Let me turn it on the side like that. We want this little flip to create this little V. This is going to be glued to the front of our book, okay? And then each one of these folds is going to be where we slide the piece of paper or cardboard in to hold our pages in, right? But we want to make this hinge longer, so we're going to actually be joining the second part of the hinge where this flap comes up. We're going to glue this piece right there, and it's going to look pretty seamless, okay? Pretty seamless. You can use any kind of glue that you have. My favorite glue, it's all kind of gunky, it is the Fabri-Tac glue. It dries really fast and clear. And I can pretty much keep working with my pieces without waiting a long time. So we're gonna just lay this hinge right on top, get it nice and lined up. Nice and straight like that. So there we go. It continues that hinge, makes that a little bit longer. And then this is going to be our third hinge. And you'll notice at the end of the third hinge, we're going to have this flap that we're going to glue to the back side of our cover, right? And all of this will make sense when we get to that point. I think the key part is if you want to make this a thicker book and you cut more hinge pieces to make a thicker, wider book, you need an odd number of these hinge pieces because you need it to end with this part coming up and you need it to begin with this part sticking up. Okay. So we're just going to glue this piece. Just like that. Miss Trisha does a really good job of explaining this, probably way better than what I'm doing. So again, if you just came in, if you want to see Trisha's video, she's the one that inspired me to make these accordion hinge journals. I have linked her video in the description box. I'm gonna put the lid on that glue. Hazel wants to know, is this glue uh, multi-purpose? Yeah, it says it bonds fabrics, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trims. And I use it on paper all the time. But one of the things that I really love about this glue, besides it drying fast, is you can sew through it. And on paper, even really thin paper, it doesn't wrinkle the paper like a lot of the different thinner wet glues do. There's no wrinkles. So yeah, I love that. <clears throat> and Anitra said she wasn't wearing antlers. So now we have this great big long hinge, right? Before we move on, what we need to do is we need to count the number of folds because this is going to give us the number of pieces we need to prepare for the parts that slide in here. And it's also going to tell us how many pages that we need to make to fit inside our journal, right? So we're going to count the hinge folds. We're not counting this first flap. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need to create ten little pieces that will slide in these folds and ten pages for our book. Again, if you wanted to make your book with even more pages, cut more strips. Just keep in mind you want this little flap here and you want this little flap here and uh, yeah, this is what you want it to look like at this point. So we need ten little cardboard flaps. Well, I'm making mine out of cardboard. You could do paper like I did in that other journal. 
Let's see, I'm going to use this Outshine box. <laughs> I'm going to cut pieces from that. Let's see, let's take this box apart. Usually it's glued on one side. Where is it glued? Where are you glued? There it is. Just taking apart the box just like this. I'm going to cut these little flaps off because they kind of get in the way, right? Just like this. Yeah, I got my little antlers at the Dollar Tree the other day because I have been, I've been such a cringe this year. I, I really have. And that's just me being honest. And, you know, I was thinking to myself... When I'm going through things or if I'm in a bad mood, the only person who's really in control of that is myself, right? And the only way I get out of it is to, on purpose, work myself out of it, right? So, yeah, I've been a total Grinch this year, and I'm trying to get myself in the mood so I'm not Grinchy on Christmas, I'm working on it. So when I saw these little antlers, I was like, okay. <laughs> Let me get them. All right, so I have all of my cardboard that now I can use for our little pieces that slide into these hinges. We need 10 of them, but we also need to figure out how wide to cut them, right? So, depending on what you've used for your hinges, your hinges might be a different size than mine. So, you need to go ahead and you need to measure those to see how tall these hinges need to be, right? We want them kind of snug. Mine are just a little over one and a quarter. So, if I cut mine one and a quarter, they'll still be kind of snug. And uh, I won't have to force them in, in there, right? And uh, let's see, we also want them longer than our hinges so that it actually holds our paper in. So they need to be one and a quarter inches tall and longer than two and a half inches for my book. Measure your hinges and see what size you need to cut yours. I'm going to bring this in. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Yes, intentional living. You have to be intentional with it, right? I really have to be. <laughs> I have to be so intentional or I'm just going to remain stuck. I'm going to cut this just like this so that I can fit it in here like this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the lengthwise of my little hinge pieces, okay? I'm going to trim off this raw edge. And let's see. Two and a half inches. Let's make these four inches. That's going to hang over the side really well. I wonder if I can get ten of them from one box. We shall see. All right. So four inches is going to be like that, stick out beyond my hinge, just like that. And now we need to cut, cut them at one and a quarter inches wide. And we need 10 of them. Let me move this over. One and a quarter is right there. I'm going to do a little demonstration. Let's pretend that this book is together. This is going to slide right in that piece just like that and hold our pages. Okay, so we need 10 of these pieces. Ten of these pieces. 
If you don't have a paper cutter, just use a ruler and a pencil, okay, and mark your lines and then just cut them with your scissors. This just speeds up the process. That's three. Four. Oh yeah, this box will make my 10. There's five. I'm not gonna use this piece because it's the corner of the box and I don't want that fold in there. So there's five pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece as well to four inches wide. Four inches wide. Just like that. And then we can cut them to one and a quarter inches tall. Like this. I'll read y'all's comments here in just a second. Let's see, I think that's seven. Eight. <laughs> Nine. Let me get rid of this little fold right here. And this should be our last one, 10 pieces. And then I think we're done with the paper cutter too. Let's just count these up before I move on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now what's really cool is you could paint these if you don't want, you know, if you're using scrap, you know, junk like I am, you might not want this in your finished journal. You can always paint it, right? You could paint that. So here's our 10 hinge pieces for our journal. I think I'm done with that. Let's move all of this right onto the floor. <laughs> so this is where we are. We've created the hinge and the little pieces that are going to slide right into that hinge and hold our pages in our journal. Oh my glory, Sally, you have a big task. You've got to get all of that ready before tonight. Goodness. Oh, Sherry, I know. I know. This year has been really tough. Really tough. Missing family and friends, right? I'm just praying that next year is so much better. So much better. Kathleen said, uh, that's like quilting with a domestic little throat. Nothing like good tools. Yes, the tools really make a huge difference, right? You could do all of this stuff manually. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. You might get a little bit more frustrated, but it's still fun though, right? It's still fun. Tracy, you're fighting the Grinch as well. I'm sorry. You're not alone. Tracy said, I believe I ordered most of Lisa's mug rug patterns from her Etsy shop yesterday. So you're the one who ordered all the mug rug patterns yesterday, Miss Tracy. I saw that come through. If you need help, let me know. Sometimes, you know, I really love Etsy, but sometimes it hiccups in the download process. I don't know why. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it does. If you have any problems, let me know. I'll just email you stuff. I do appreciate y'all watching along, even if you're not 
ever going to make a journal or even one like this. I'm just really glad that we have an opportunity to come hang out with each other throughout our week. So thanks for hanging out, even if you're not even remotely interested in making this journal. <laughs> oh, Anitra. Oh, she said the last update was promising. I'm so glad. Oh, my goodness. That is scary stuff, isn't it? That's so scary. All right, so we have created our hinge. We've made the little pieces that slide in. Let me show you what I'm going to make my pages from, okay? I'm going to be making my cover from a... <laughs> Food Lion Strawberry Frosted Weed Box. And then I have an assortment of different junk mail that I'm going to create my pages from. This book is going to look totally different than the more refined, more coordinated book, right? This is much more refined. But in the end, you're not going to see all of this because I'm making mine into an art journal. And so future videos in this series, you'll see how all of this junk just transform. You'd never know it was junk, right? You'd never know. So I have, let's see. I'm going to use the uh, cereal box for the front and the back, okay? And I'll show you that here in a second. And then I have this little flyer that folds out like this, which is really cool because that gives me lots of space to do some art journaling in. So we're going to use that. We have another piece of a junk mail that folds open like that. This is a little bit thicker, kind of like cardstock a little bit. We're going to use that. Now, many of y'all might get these little flyers from Joann's. <laughs> And uh, they fold open like this, and there's several pages inside. We're going to create a page from that. This is the cover of a junk mailer catalog that my mom got. See how that folds open like that? We're going to use this as a page. And then, y'all, I save all my envelopes from my friends, so we're going to use this in one. Uh, we're going to use this green envelope. We're going to use this one. This is kind of cool. It's got a great big pocket on the front. And we're going to use that. And this, which folds out. And then another envelope. So that's what my pages are going to be made out of. Sally said, we all get to see, yeah, don't judge too much uh, my eating habits. You should see the pile of junk over on my long arm table that I've been collecting. It kind of tells a lot of stories about the way we eat. <laughs> Most of it not good. Most of it's not good. We should probably make some healthier choices next year. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be making my pages out of all of this stuff. But I want my front and my back to be a little bit more sturdy. So we're going to use this cardboard box. Let me see if I can cut this apart without messing it up. Where is this one to glued? On the side somewhere. There we go. I'm just going to separate this just like that. Just like that. Now to create our pages, we're going to be folding them. So all of these envelopes and the stuff that I just showed you is already folded. If we were to cut the edge of this envelope off, and then at this folded edge here, it's going to actually create two pages, right? Because when you open it up, it's got a fold right in the middle. 
that is what slips over the hinge part of our journal and keeps everything inside, right? But I want my cover to be a little bit more sturdy, but it still needs to have a fold that that hinge is going to pop through, okay? So when I cut my journal cover, I'm going to cut this piece in half so that it still has this fold. And this will be the back side of my hinge, and it will have a fold here, okay? I hope that's not too confusing. Let me go ahead and get rid of all of these extra little tabs because they just get in my way. Cutting them right off. There goes those in the floor. <laughs> This part does not have to be pretty. I'm just really wanting to get rid of those flaps at this point. Those go in the floor. I don't want to throw those in the floor though. All right, so let's see, what size do we want to make this journal? I am going to bring my paper cutter back in. <laughs> Barbara said I better go get all of my junk mail out of the fire pit. It's free supplies that you can make your journals out of. All right, so we know that we want this and this flap, and then we want this and this flap. So I'm going to cut this apart right there first. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to separate this into two pieces. But I want to keep a flap on each one. There's two covers like that. And now we can decide how tall we want our book. I'm going to cut this little flap off. Just to get that out of the way. Let's see. Let's fold it over like this. Let's see. What is a good size book? Let's see. Six inches over, that would be good, right? Six inches, that's a good book size. Six inches. Just like that. So my cover is gonna be six inches wide. You of course can make yours as wide as you want your cover to be. You might even wanna make a little tiny journal, right? And now let's figure out how tall we want our journal to be. Let's clean this edge up. For art, bigger is better. You're right. You're right. So then let's make it a taller book. Let's make this one 9, 10. We can get that one 10 inches. All right. Miss Kathleen, we're going to make it 10 inches tall. So six inches wide, 10 inches tall. See how it has that little flap? This hinge is gonna come right inside that with the cardboard that's gonna hold that together. So this will be the front of our journal, okay? So we're just gonna repeat the same thing for the back page. We're going to first cut it six inches wide. Six inches wide. There we go. Oh, nope. Don't do that, Lisa. Think, think, think. There we go. I almost cut off the wrong side. There we go. I almost cut off the wrong side. We don't want to cut off that hinge. All right, so that's six inches wide, and we went with 10 inches tall. Thank you, Conti. All right, 10 inches tall. 
That's probably the tallest journal I've made. So that's a first. And this will be the back page or the back cover. So there's two of our 10 pages, okay? We're gonna count these as pages. There's two of our 10. You might need to trim these pages so that they go inside your cover unless you want them to stick beyond your cover, right? See, I don't need all of those actually. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just need eight more, so. Eight. I had some extras. Let's go through and we might need to trim these so that, because I want my pages to fit inside my book just like that and not stick beyond the edges. So this one needs to be trimmed. I'm just gonna use my scissors, y'all. I want it to fit right inside there just like that. So that fits in there. That fits, that fits. This does not fit, so let's cut off one of the ends. Like that. Let's see, I don't wanna lose my little page that folds out though. Hmm. Yep, I'm gonna lose it. That's all right. Still sticks out the edge. Of course, if you want your edges to be perfect, you could use your paper trimmer. <laughs> Let's see, does the Joann's fit in there? Oh, it just does fit inside there. And these pages I know will fit. So there we go. These are gonna be our other pages for our journal. All right, so at this point, we have all of the pages for our journal marked. I wanna stack them up. Let's see. I wanna use that center fold, so I'm gonna stack that right on the edge. It on the edge like this. I want to use this as my fold. That as my fold. These are all going to be the folded edge. Like that. Like that. Like that, and like this, and we're gonna mark where this hinge goes, okay? So I'm just going to bring all of those folded edges, just like that, and center all of these pages right inside. And we're gonna mark where these hinges go. It might be helpful if you have a clip. Oh, I moved my clip. Of course I did. Let's just use this one. I'm just gonna hold those and pinch them in place. We're gonna bring in our hinge. <laughs> I'm gonna fold up my hinge. Just like this. We're gonna center that right where we want it to be like that. And now we can use a marker and we're going to mark the folded edges of our book so we know where to cut to put our hinge, okay? So let me grab a marker. Right there, I'm going to just try to mark each one of these pages. Just 
just like that. Whoops. Didn't mean to get rid of it yet. This is just a fast way of marking the placement of your hinge. You don't have to measure all of all of your pieces. Just mark the hinges just like that. See that? I know that I have a black piece of paper in here. It's going to be hard to see this black marker on, but that's okay. There's the placement for our hinges. Kathleen said, what card stock do you buy for, say, pattern printing and the folded pieces you make first? I went to get some a couple of times. Miss Kathleen, are you talking about paper to make journals with? Or cardstock to make pattern pieces for sewing and stuff? <clears throat> Let's see, for the next step, I'm going to bring out my little X-Acto knife. We can unhinge these pieces. Now we're going to open them up. So that our little dots are facing up. See that? That's where our hinge is going to go. And with our X-Acto knife, I'm just going to cut this small little piece just like that. Okay? That's created a slit for our hinge piece to come right through. And we're going to do that for all 10 pieces. For my journals, Miss Kathleen, uh, I buy all kinds. Like, I'm really not partial. <laughs> uh, I love the paper pads from Joann's and Michael's and Tuesday Mornings. Tuesday Mornings has some really fun ones. Uh, but, yeah, I like thicker cardstock. I like the thinner patterned paper. Again, I am not partial to it. If I'm making patterns... More times than not, I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy the clear cutting mats. They come two in a package for a dollar. And it's clear plastic that you can cut through. So you can trace a pattern piece with a permanent marker and then cut out your piece. So if you're sewing or making a quilt or something and you want a template pattern piece, go to the Dollar Tree and check out the clear cutting mats. But if you're asking about um, for making journals, cards, scrapbooking stuff, then, yeah, I'm not partial. And I get uh, all kinds of card stock and paper pads. My envelopes, I'm just going to open them up just like this. which means we have to cut the ends off so that they open up just like a book page, right? And I'm going to, normally I would leave that on, but I'm just going to cut that little tag off like that. So you want your envelopes to open like that. And again, we're just cutting each one of these little slits where we've marked our hinge placement. Just like that. Oh, a good thickness for running through the printer. Uh, let's see. If I use two of a too heavy of a cardstock, I have to. I have this little special tray that pops open so it doesn't curl the the cardstock. I tend to not like to print on really heavy cardstock, but I. Going to be really honest, I don't know the different pounds <laughs> of thickness. So, I'm sorry, I cannot help you much there. I don't like it to be too thick if I'm printing on it, because it cur my printer curls the pages. Cut 
I think that's it. This is the one that it might be hard to see because the edge of this one was dark. It's hard to see that marker. Let's see, can I see it? Let's just do this. little fold right there is dark so I cannot see the the marker right there Jeannie your Dollar Tree doesn't have that template or those little clear cutting mats huh well I guess they all carry different stuff don't they This was the other one that was going to be really hard to see. I can see one of them, but I cannot see the other little dot. So we're just going to do that and cut it that way. There's another one. And now we just have these two journal covers like this. And like this. So it seems like a lot of prep work for a journal, right? But it gets fun from here on out. <laughs> but what's really cool, uh, you know, if you came in after we started, what's really cool about this method of making the journals is that you can take these pages in and out and nothing's permanent until you glue it together. So for an art journal, I can think of a no better way, really, other than if you're using a disc system like the Happy Planner or maybe uh, like elastics, like a travel journal where you can slip stuff in and out. Uh, yeah, this is going to be great for an art journal. Jenny said, hi. I just hit play and I didn't realize you jumped into a lot. I'm so glad you're here. This is a totally different than what we usually do. Usually we're making something quilty related. Uh, so today's video is totally different and probably not as organized, but it's a lot of fun. All right, so we have cut the slits for our hinges in all of these pieces. And now comes the exciting part where we start assembling and it's gonna start looking more like a book at this point. So we have our hinge that we've already made and glued together. Remember we have this one little flap. We're gonna leave this alone, leave that little first flap alone. We're gonna create our first fold, just like that. And that's gonna go right inside the slit that we just made. So I have my cover right here. We have our slit right there. We're bypassing this little flappy part. We're gonna create our first fold and this fold goes right inside the little slit. Just like that, let me move all this so it lays nice and flat. So there's our first little flappy. We can bring in the little pieces that we cut and that's going to slide right inside that fold. You could do it, Lisa. There we go. <laughs> See how it slides right in there? It's not extremely tight, but it's a little snug, okay? So there's our first page. Now we're going to bring this next little fold up. We're going to save this piece for our cover. 
And now we can just start adding in our pages. So I need to find, there's the slit. There's that. This piece is gonna be hard because it's hard to see the slit. There we go. Sometimes I just open it up with my fingers and grab that and pull it through. Just like that. Slide it all the way down and put your little hinge piece right in there. Just like that. And now we can fold all of that back up and move that over. See how we're just going to start adding our pages right to it. Let's see, there is my slit there. Sally says, now that makes sense. Yeah, when you're just folding and cutting all these pieces, you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you going to do with all of that? But at this point, it all starts to come together and look like a book. And you're like, holy cow. I was totally blown away when I saw her do this. So there's that page. We'll fold up this next fold. Let's add our Joann's catalog in there. Slide that through, push it all the way down, and slide in our cardboard. Just like that. The more you work towards the end of your book, the less awkward all of this becomes. <laughs> Slide that in. Just like that. I'm not gluing any of these cardboard pieces at this point because I want to be able to take these pages out and paint them or stamp on them or use my jelly plate, all different kinds of things that I want to do to these pages. And I want to be able to take them out of this journal while I'm working on them. Once I'm done with them, I will end up gluing these pieces because even though they're snug, there's still a chance that one of them could slide out, right? So at some point, once I'm done with each page, I will end up gluing this in there or taking another page and covering that hinge and creating another page and glue that. So there's another page that I could work on, right? What I like about these journals as well with the accordion hinge is that the, the spine of the book is expandable. So if you are doing some journaling and you like adding elements like bows and fabric, the spine of your book is expandable. So have you ever made a journal and uh, you stuffed it so full of stuff that it kind of looks like an alligator with its mouth open like this? <laughs> the spine of this book will grow so that it looks more proportionate. And I thought that's really cool too. This will be cool. I don't know what I'll do with that. That should be fun. Let's see, and we're working our way back towards the back. Let's see how it becomes a lot less awkward to add these last pages in. <laughs> Just like that, and we have one more fold. You should have a little flap at the end. 
Here's where we're going to add the second part of our shredded wheat box. Just like this. Just like that. So everything that we've made, this book, isn't that cool looking? Everything we've used has been junk mail or recycled boxes. Isn't that awesome? So because I'm going to be working on the cover, I'm not going to glue down my flaps yet. See this and this? Those are the two flaps that we left alone when we first started folding and adding our pages. Once I do my cover, then we can glue this flap down. You could even bring in a piece of decorative paper and glue something over top of it if you wanted to. But the cover of my book, I like hard like this, right? In this other book, that's exactly what I did. I glued down my flap, and then I cut another piece of paper and glued it right over top so you don't even really see this little tag that goes over the cover because I covered it up, but it is glued down to the cover. We're not doing that yet. You can if you want to, but I wanna be able to take off my cover just like this and paint it or whatever I'm going to do with it. Who knows what we're gonna do with it, but I wanna be able to do that. So I'm not gluing anything yet. Isn't that really cool though? <laughs> I was like, yes, that is genius. Just like that. So see this cover? See how that expands like that? You could add all kinds of stuff to this journal because there's so much room in that accordion style hinge. I love that. Not only that, because of the way that the hinge is made when you're working in this journal. And let's say you don't wanna take the pages out. Let's say you wanna just glue everything and get that done. When you're working on this journal, it lays flat. It lays open and it lays flat. I think that's really important when you're trying to actually work in a journal is that it lays nice and flat, right? Right now there's a lot of shifting because nothing is glued. As Soon as you start gluing these pieces, it's gonna really tighten up and all of the movement is gonna go away. As Soon as you secure your little hinges. But while you're working on it, you'll notice that there's some shifting like this. But see how nice and flat it is from the cover to the back. Your pages lay nice and flat. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Yes, I love it. Can you add to the accordion later and make more pages? Connie, I think you could. You could take this last piece out. Let's say you made this. Let's say you put it together and you're like, uh, I think I wanna add more pages. At this point, we haven't glued anything, right? You could just take this page out. If you missed the beginning where we made this accordion, you could just cut more paper and fold it and glue it right here. That's all this is. This is three pieces glued together. Yeah, and you could just expand it and keep on adding to it, right? You absolutely could. So that's awesome. What I think is cool too, let me see, let me get this back in there. Which I folded my paper, see that? <laughs> I did not make my accordion hinge with the thickest of paper. This was just an envelope, junk mail envelope. <laughs> it was a bigger envelope, but it was still just a paper envelope. It's not cardstock. It's not any kind of special paper. It was just junk mail.
Right? Isn't that genius? Yes. Mimsy said, to add, to continue to add, couldn't you use brads that open and close to hold the cover on? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. If you have some brads, I don't see why you couldn't do that. Yeah. But one of the cool things about this kind of journal, too, is that there's possibility to add even more pages. Like here's the little hinge and let's say we're done, right? Let's say we're done. You could glue this in here. You can cover this hinge with a piece of paper. So watch this. Oh, I meant to use this calendar as one of my pages. <laughs> I just remembered I had it. So let's just rip this right off of my calendar. And we'll fold that in half like that. You could take some double-sided tape. You could take some glue. Put that right over your hinge. Glue it down and there's more pages in your book, right? Just like that. So that's cool. This little flap, I'm going to do something with this. I haven't decided what yet. Again, I could cut another piece of cardboard and cover it just like that. I could just glue this whole piece like this and cover it with some paper. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I haven't thought that far in advance yet. But yeah, there's possibilities of adding more pages right to your, to your hinges. I'm putting this in there because I wanted to add that to my book and I forgot. <laughs> Lynn said, this could be adapted a bit so a young person could even... Absolutely, Lynn. I don't know if I'd let them use, you know, if they're old enough to use the X-Acto knife <laughs> uh, to cut the slits, but yes. Yes, and you could just save your junk. That's all this is. And it's not going to look like junk when we're all done. Or you can do the same exact thing with all your pretty papers that you might have been collecting and make a book that's more coordinated and pretty and shabby chic and planned out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely love it. See this hinge? See how it expands? There's so much room so that you could add embellishments on your pages and your book is not going to end up wider at the opening, right? I love that. So let's talk about some of the uses of what you could use these books for, right? I'm making mine into an art journal. And you could use yours totally for something different. And last week, was it the end of last week's video, uh, I showed... A sampling of my journal collection. I use mine as my planner. I make journals and use them as planners. I take notes in them. I use them as scrapbooks like travel journals and I save all the tidbits from our journey in that book as memories and I use them as journals and I write down things that I'm going through. Uh, I use them as prayer journals I use them for to-do lists. There's all different kinds of ways. You don't have to make an art journal. And let's say you don't want any of those kinds of books. You could just make some and give them to your friends, right? Because uh, they make such awesome gifts. They really do. And I've always thought that a handmade gift was far much more special, <laughs> right? I know I can't be the only one who thinks that. Let's see. Anitra says, what do you do with this type of journal? Well, there you go. I, yay. Do you glue something onto each page? If you covered this, I'm sorry, I had to get my, oh, there you go. You could paint this. Like I'm going to guess so, my front cover, because I might paint something right on this. Or 
I might take some pretty paper, like one of these calendar book pages. Let's see what we have in here. This just came in the mail yesterday. Oh, look at the little chicken. Let's, let's use the chicken for an example. This just came in the mail yesterday. <laughs> and I'm not going to use the calendar because I use my planner. So all of these pages are up for grabs, right? You could cut out the little rooster and glue him right to the cover of your journal. Just like that. You could make a little rooster journal. Isn't he cute? I'm going to save him too. You could do that. Uh, when I say junk journal, okay, so there's all these different kinds of ways to make journals, right? You could buy an old children's book, cut the covers off, and fill the inside with papers, and what do they call that? <laughs> That'll come to me. <laughs> uh, there's a name for that. I forget. Now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, but yeah, you can repurpose books into new journals. You could make junk journals. And when I say junk journals, this is all made from junk. We're transforming it into a different kind of journal, but the contents, the book, is made from all junk. I did not purchase any of this. This was all going in my trash can or recycling bin. But then... So this was a not made from junk. Same kind of book, put together the exact same way, but this was pattern paper that I purchased, right? So I would not call this a junk journal. I would just call this an accordion hinge journal, <laughs> right? But it's not so much a junk journal unless I filled it with all of my junk, right? Unless I filled it with all of this stuff, then I wouldn't really so much call this a junk journal. This one is. But when I'm done, it's not it's going to be an art journal. There's prayer journals. There's bullet journals. Travel notebooks. There's all so many kinds of journals. It's confusing, right? A scrapbook? Yes. Mimsy said it's recycled, not junk. You're right, Mimsy. It's not junk. It's going to be really cool when we're done. So I do know that in the next video, it's going to be pre-recorded, but in the next video, I'm going to be decorating the cover, the front and the back. We will not get to that today because I want to save that to go in there too, because I'm going to paint it with some gesso, 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 gesso. I never know how to say that. Gesso. And that's going to take some time to dry, right? So that's the downside of doing stuff like this on a live. Is because it's going to take time to dry. So I just removed the front and the back covers. Everything else is staying together. I don't want to lose my pieces while this is drying. So I'm going to clip it together. Where's my clip? Here we go. I don't want to lose these pieces and have to cut more, so I'm just going to clip them so I don't lose them while these pieces are drying. And I'm just going to gesso, gesso the front, right? Let me bring some of this junk that I'm not using because I don't want to gesso my work table. There we go. No one wants to gesso their work table. And so this will have plenty of time to dry so that I can film how I plan on decorating the front cover. Oh my glory. Oh goodness. I might have to call Harlan in here for this. Oh, it's 119. He's he's in a meeting right now, too. Oh. No. 
I can't get the lid off. We need Harlan's assistance and he's in a meeting. <laughs> so we're not doing that today. Look at my hand. So the next thing I'm going to do, not during the live, is I'm going to gesso, which is just painting this thick, thick white paint, basically. But it's going to cover the graphics on the outside of my box. And uh, because, you know, the cereal box is a little bit slick, sometimes when you try to paint on this kind of surface, the paint just kind of beads up and doesn't cover. So the gesso is going to cover that, and I'll be able to paint directly on this. Or cover it with tissue paper and the graphics is not going to sh show through the tissue paper right let me show you as an example I have some tissue paper let's say I wanted to decoupage some tissue paper on my cover once you get the tissue paper wet, it's kind of translucent, right? But even without it being wet, you can see my shredded wheat graphics through the tissue paper. So if we paint that with a gesso, it's going to hide all that graphics and give us a blank, clean workspace. But, yep, it's just a recycled cereal box. I wish I could get this open. Tap it on the table a few times. All right. Usually I put a little piece of saran wrap or something. <gasps> it worked. We are just the wing. Thank you, Doris. Thank you. All right, let's just so. Yeah, that's a mess. All right, we're going to gesso. I probably need to use more than this, and I probably should have sh shaken it up some. Just like that. This is not the best brush for this either, is it? I really wanted to use this brush, but it's brand new and it's kind of stiff. Yes, we just so. Ooh, Dari, you have a collection of ephemera and vintage paper. Take a picture of it and share it on the creative crew. I love looking at that kind of stuff. I didn't mix it up, Mimsy. I should probably at least shake it up, shouldn't I? Because she's a little thin. I'm going to take that off. And try not to make a huge mess here. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. The sun is going to start coming right in on my work table. I probably should have closed the curtain while I was up. All right. That should be better. This one is a thinner one. They have some that are thicker. I don't know if you've ever worked with texture paste and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, that's a little better. I might have to do two coats with this particular gesso. And for sure, it's going to have to dry. Oh yeah, it's covering much better now. See that? But what it's going to do is also going to change the slick cardboard into a surface that's going to hold paint if I decide to paint this. Just 
just like that. Like that. I might end up gessoing both sides. I'm not sure yet. This is going to be one of those create as you go kinds of journals. <laughs> no pressure, no stress, just fun creating. Just like that. Now we're just going to let that dry. We're going to move that off to the side and we'll do this one. What is just so? Let's read the back of it because I cannot give you off the top of my head <laughs> a good definition. This is professional grade 100% acrylic gesso formulated with the latest acrylic technology for adhesion and flexibility for a variety of surfaces other than just canvas. Excellent tooth and absorbency to accept oil and acrylic colors, pastels, charcoal, pencil, and crayon. I know when I paint on canvas, I just sew my canvas before I get started. Uh, and that's what this is. But you can also just sew your watercolor paper, stuff like that, before you start painting. And it gives the paint something to really hold on to. So that's one reason why I'm doing this box is to get rid of that slick, slippery feeling, but to also sort of act as a whiteout for the graphics. And it's flexible. So if you were to bend the cover, this is not going to crack like sometimes paint will crack and stuff like that. But this is dries flexible, so it does not crack. I'm gonna make a mess. They also have a black get gesso. I don't know why I want to say gesso. <laughs> gesso. Gesso gesso. They also have a black gesso when i paint night scenes i use the black gesso on my canvas and that really helps me get a good head start on my painting versus buying a black canvas which is very pricey right because they've already done part of that process for you There we go. So in the next video, you'll see what we're gonna do with the covers, but I've just sewed them just like this. Now they have to dry. Oh, I'm so glad we got the lid off. Jeannie, yeah, that that calendar actually has some really nice pictures in it. And like I said, I'm not going to be using it as a calendar because I use my planner. I'm going to have to get that off. But let's take a look at some of these pictures before the light comes in so bright through my window. We live near Surrey Power Station. This is actually kind of scary uh, when you look at the every year they send this calendar out and we have one uh, from last year. So this is the one we just got yesterday. This is the Surrey Power Station right there where the star is. <laughs> and they send these calendars out to everyone who lives within the circle areas, which we do with special instructions in that orange piece to hang in your window in case there's an incident at the power station. You can put this in your window 
And so when they drive through your neighborhood, they know if you need assistance or if you are okay without having to knock on doors, right? That's kind of scary. <laughs> but it's got some really pretty pictures in here, like this one. It's upside down. I'm trying not to mess with my gesso. The horses, those are pretty. Horses. Yeah, these are really pretty. I might actually save a lot of these pages to make a whole different journal out of, right? Because look how nice they are. the little goats that door is gorgeous I wish our front door looked exactly like that <laughs> oh the little pig he would be cute in a journal right yeah this is a nice book a nice calendar the little llamas oh that's cute Else. Ooh, that's gorgeous. How pretty would that be? Yeah, here's all the instructions in case of emergency, where you need to go, <laughs> who you need to listen to. Yeah. So, ooh, that's pretty too, isn't it? Yep, so... Check your mail. You might start getting calendars not from these people, but, you know, all these different companies, they send out calendars this time of the year, getting ready to approach, you know, the new year. Keep your eye out for calendars in the mail. When you get them, don't throw them away. Put them in your crafting stash. All right, I think that's as far as we're going to get because my gesso needs time to dry before we move on. And I need to wash those brushes out before that dries. But yes, so that's where we are. We have our book to a point where we're working on the cover. Next week, uh, I'll be actually decorating the cover, but that's not going to be a live video, y'all. In case you came in while uh, after we got started. Next Thursday is Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas. Christmas Eve is usually like so busy cooking and whatever else we're doing, wrapping presents. Maybe we just need a day just to chill out, right? So next week's video is going to be pre-recorded. I'll be making the cover. So come next Thursday to watch that. It should be like 20 to 30 minutes. Then the following Thursday is New Year's Eve. I'm pre-recording that journal series because I don't think this would work so well in the camper. I'm already packing some crafting stuff. I want to pre-record that video. But I might be going live from South Carolina in our camper. And if I do, I'm going to be doing some English paper piecing with hexes. So I'll show you how you can baste your hexes uh, English paper piecing. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, Kathleen, you're so right. I need to get some plastic. Let me put this out where I can see it so I don't forget. Thank you for reminding me. We are doing a Tuesday Live. Um, yes, because that's a couple of days before Christmas Eve. And we did not go live this week. So I think I'm going to try to keep it short, Sally. Like post one photo. And we'll see how it goes. But uh, I did think we would go ahead and do Creative Crew Live on Facebook next week. But we probably will not be doing it for the next two weeks as we go through South Carolina. Yeah, the link for Creative Crew. If you are on Facebook and you haven't joined us yet, we would love to have you. The link for Creative Crew is in the description box, and there's two security questions. You have to answer those, or we can't let you in, but 
We do all kinds of fun stuff over there. We do swaps sometimes. We just finished up a Christmas ornament swap. We do lives every other Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And those are um, like show and tell lives where I get to show off your stuff. You put stuff into the show and tell and we look at it during that live. We do Zooms where we get together and chit chat. We also do organized Zooms like I recently, well, I shared the video here on YouTube too. But uh, creative crew members came into the Zoom and we had an Inkscape class, free class on Inkscape, and they could ask questions and I could answer them live using Inkscape. So I look forward to doing a lot of stuff like that next year. Yep, my parents are going to South Carolina. <laughs> yep. So first we're going down to south of the border. We're staying at Pedro's. Has anybody been to south of the border, South Carolina, Pedro's? We're going to be staying at the campground, Pedro's campground, for a couple of days. And then we're going to, I think it's called uh, Carolina Landing. It's the campground that we're going to stay at for two weeks. Anitra says, I'm really tempting her to join Facebook. I do know, Miss Anitra, okay, I do know that a couple of our creative crew members are only on Facebook to participate in the creative crew. They don't have anything on their personal page. They don't have a bunch of friends added to Facebook. And when they log on to Facebook, they come straight to creative crew. And then when they're done, they leave Facebook. <laughs> I do know of two people that only use Facebook for that reason, but. Kathleen said, Lisa, I may have missed the heart quilt right behind you. Is there a tutorial? There's tutorials for both of them. So, okay, I have two heart quilts. See that? But you're probably talking about the conversation heart. If you type in the search bar uh, on YouTube, Lisa Cape and Quilts, conversation heart, or heart quilt, it will probably pop up easier than scrolling through two years worth of videos <laughs> to find it, right? But yeah, uh, there is a video on how I made that. It's so cute. The other one behind me right there, the little nine patch with the hearts in the middle, those are screen printed. And I did a video on that and we did a giveaway. That was like a year ago, so we're not doing that part anymore. But yeah, you can watch how I made screen printed hearts and quilted them. Super fun. So much fun. I want to do that more often too. So much stuff that you want to do that you forget about that's why you should make a journal because when things pop in your head you write them down so you don't forget Yeah, so little time to do all that we want to make. I know, right? I know. That's why I have to, I keep a special section in my planner for stuff just like that. When it comes, pops in my head, I have to write it down because I'll forget. And then I have to intentionally plan it into uh, my day or my week or my month or else I just won't make time for it. Oh, I was going to show the quilt kit that I got from Valeria. Yeah. I don't want to freak. Thank you, Jeannie, for reminding me. I don't want to get gesso on it, so let me move this stuff over. The light is really coming in that window, so I hope you can see everything. I don't want to get gesso. Let me move this to my cutting mat. See that? I'll be right back. I'm going to shut the curtain.
There we go. Well, I'm glad I'm not wearing my pajama pants. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got this yesterday. Ooh, I've never had a Jolly Bar before. I thought that was so awesome. A Moda Jolly Bar. Dear Christmas Urban Chicks. Yes, I haven't even opened it up, so I haven't seen all the different fabrics in this line. But if you just look at the side of that, you can already tell that's going to be awesome right and then she sent me the card and then it is a, this quilt kit and this is the backing and I'm assuming that all of those fabrics in there are the pieces to make this quilt isn't that awesome it's so gorgeous glad tidings black quilt by Maywood studio my mind was blown holy cow Valeria, thank you so much. Y'all y'all have uh, really spoiled me. So I got this yesterday. Let me show off a couple other things. I got that cute little tea caddy from Jeannie. Miss Nancy sent me a card, and I want to make a video on this. I need to ask Nancy if I can make a video on this. It's a corner page marker, but it's fabric, and she put she embroidered my initial on it. Isn't that cute? I want to make a video on this too. Yes. See, I've already put it to use. That way, look at all the stuff I have to do, y'all. <laughs> that way, when I close my planner, I know exactly where I am. See that? Isn't that awesome? I love it. I want to make a video on that. I'm just making sure I don't have any personal stuff. Let's see. Oh, I got a mug rug. Where did I move that? Barbara made me a mug rug. I moved it over there. I'd have to get up again. She made me the cutest mug rug. I shared that on Facebook. What else? Oh my goodness. So much awesome stuff. Yeah, Dari, I'm going to ask Nancy first. I'm sure she won't mind though. But yeah, I would love to make a video on these. Super cute. And even if you don't have an embroidery machine, you could use a fabric marker. You could use some heat transfer vinyl with, an, with a letter. You could use fabric markers, fabric paint, or you don't have to put anything on this fold, right? You could just use pretty fabric on the fold. I thought that was super cute. I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff. I'm just taking a quick look. My mug rug's o over there. Yeah. Ooh, Sally said that could double as a coaster as well. Yeah, it could, couldn't it? It most certainly could. It's so pretty. It just adds some color to my page, doesn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, Sally says you have another package coming. Y'all are just, y'all spoil me rotten. You know y'all don't have to send me anything, right? <laughs> you do know that, right? You do know that. I hope you know that. But, wow, I feel so special when I open up stuff like that. That quilt kit, I'm going to have to plan intentionally time to make that quilt because that is gorgeous it is so pretty look my gesso is drying that did not take that long oh it's still wet here and there but see how it covers that stuff up i could even do a second coat to really cover the dark stuff that's shining through but yeah it's drying pretty quick I might just sew the back side too. I haven't decided. So just a show of hands, or just say me, me. <laughs> Who plans on making a junk journal? 
with an accordion hinge. And again, I just want to throw a shout out to Trisha Morris. She's probably never seen any of my videos. <laughs> That's okay, because predominantly I'm a quilter. Club Scrap is her channel on YouTube. Uh, I've linked her video for my inspiration. The link is in the description box. I want you to check her out because she walks you through the whole thing. Of course, she's not using junk, mail, or recycled things. She's using pretty pattern paper, and she walks you through the whole thing. So when you watch her video, she starts at the beginning, and she is done with a finished book. My process is a little different, and that's okay. But I did link her video. Mimsy has shared it in the live chat so that you could find it easy. But uh, so, yeah, make sure you check out her video. She might also explain it a little bit differently than I do. You know, sometimes you might watch five binding videos and there's one person who explains it exactly right to where you get it. So if you are confused by what I did, maybe Trisha's video will make it less confusing, right? Maybe. Okay, so I see we have people who are making them. Hazel's not sure yet. That's all right, Miss Hazel. There's plenty of time to make up your mind. It might be like a year from now. You're like, okay, I want to make one. And you come back, right, and watch. Sally's going to make one, but it'll be not with her junk. Oh, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous journals. What did I do with mine? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I moved it. I moved it. I covered it up somewhere. Oh, there it is. They're gorgeous. If you just coordinate your papers together. Oh, I love the look of that spine. This is the first time I've done one like that. I really think that that is like super handsome looking. I really do kind of like my favorite thing when I first saw people stitching their their pages into the spine of a book I thought that was gorgeous I still do but right now I kind of have a crush on this whole accordion journal I really do it's like my new favorite right now your videos explain better than most oh thank you so much Anitra, thank you for sharing the video. Thank you. You know what? That helps my channel a lot. If you want to help my channel, if you share this video on Facebook or wherever you share on social media, that would help me so much. So thank you. Bye, Miss Hazel. Merry Christmas. Yes, I could do a flip through. Sally wants to know, could you do a quick flip through on that one? You want to see this one, right? The one with the pretty papers? Yes, I want to move my gesso. I don't want to get my gesso on this pretty ribbon that Linda sent me. All right, so we're going to do a quick flip through. Uh, I haven't written in any of this. Most of this is not glued down, although I did start gluing some of some things to the hinges. Like here's my hinge, right? I glued this little scrap piece of paper that folds up like this to the hinge. So now this page is permanently in my book. There's no taking this page out, right? The front, uh, the little flap, I covered with a pretty piece of paper. Of course, the pattern paper that I was using is only one-sided, so one side is blank white. But they do have paper that both sides are pretty. But I like to write in my journal, so this gives me space to do that. And usually, I coffee dye or tea stain my pages before I get started, so they look kind of old. But this one, I just went with the paper right out of the paper pad. 
This one I glued, see that hinge? I can still cover that up. And I just glued a piece of paper to that one. The rest are still unglued. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? The thing is, my camera doesn't show colors like they are in real life. I wish it did. I love pages with text and writing on them. Music notes. This is a really pretty paper pad. So there we go. And when, bef before I put this piece of paper on this page, I glued the ribbon down using the Fabri-Tac glue and then I covered that little ribbon with this piece of paper. So the closure for my journal is nice and finished just like that. And this is just a wrap around closure with the ribbon that Linda sent with her package. Oh, yeah. So she sent me some purple uh, hot pads. Those are going in my camper. Those were gorgeous. They're not even in my studio. They're packed up, ready to go to the camper. <laughs> but this ribbon was in the box that Linda sent. Isn't that pretty? Mimsy, you're going to make yours as a birthday present for your mom. Aw, that's so nice. Valeria, I do. I cannot wait to get, I won't be able to get started before Christmas on that quilt, but it will be my 2021 year project where I'll be able to work on it. Hopefully it doesn't take me the whole year. I can't wait to see that quilt all together, but it'll be do something that I'm doing for me, not something, a quilt that I'm making for someone else. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Anitra, you're getting a camper this year. Oh, you're gonna have to keep me updated. Keep me updated. That's exciting. Selma, you said she writes letters to your nephew that passed. You know what? That is probably really good therapy, right? I would think that that's probably really good therapy. Yeah, so there's the flip through on that journal. Isn't she so pretty? Y'all could get, there's like a million different themed paper pads. Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Happy Birthday, baby ones. Maybe you know someone who's having a baby. You could make them a little book so that they could keep all their little mementos in and write down the weight and the birthday and all that stuff. Maybe you know someone who's getting married. They have all the wedding paper pads. You could make them a book. They could put pictures from their honeymoon in there. Put pictures from the wedding. Yeah. Countless ways that you could use them. <laughs> Aw, Sally, that's a good idea. She's going to make one and write a letter each year to all the grandkids. Oh, that's such a good idea. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> see, I have to write stuff down or else I forget it. Let's see. Where's the piece of paper? A journal for the grandkids. Write letters. That's a good idea. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm not going to see you live here before Christmas. 
You will get a pre-recorded journal video next Thursday, so keep your eye out for that. But I won't see you live on YouTube before Christmas, so I just want to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. If you're like me, go to the Dollar Tree and buy yourself one of these cute little antler hats. It was a dollar. <laughs> if you're like me and you're a little grinchy this year, try to on purpose. Do something that's going to change that a little bit so that you can find some joy in Christmas this year. I am working on it. The struggle has been real, but I'm working on it. This afternoon, I'm going to wrap Christmas presents. Maybe that will help get me more in the mood, too. Still have not yet put up a tree. I don't know if we're doing that, but I'm working on it, y'all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for hanging out. I know these journal videos are not going to be for everybody, but we will be getting back into sewing and quilting and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, change up the pace for just a couple of weeks, right? Make sure you check out the video if you missed it last night. There's a free pattern as a Christmas present from me to you. I hope you make some of those tea caddies. They're so much fun. All right, everybody. Y'all will see me live uh, maybe New Year's Eve. Where are we at? Here we go. Maybe Christmas Eve. I'm going to try to go live from South Carolina. So we'll see how that goes. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love y'all so much. Thanks for hanging out with me, even if you're not going to ever make a journal. I appreciate you just hanging out with us. Bye, everybody.